I mean, it, it, that's what's so fascinating about this to me. Right. So Peter Frey, who is also an editor at a magazine called Jacobin, wrote up um, the, the pieces essentially argues, I mean, argues a couple of things. But one thing is that wonk bloggers or basically any reporter who talks about policy for a living um, is uniquely suited for kind of a, something that some people call source capture, which is that they're very dependent on the people they're reporting on to influence how they understand things, right? A lot of journalists will not have academic training, nor should they. Uh, but if they're writing on a very complicated economic issue, they're going to have to rely on economists, particularly the people who are involved with that debate, for guidance. And, you know, or they're, you know, they're, reading, some, they're reading papers and they can read the you know, introduction, conclusion, and kind of the headline results, but they can't quite they don't have the sophistication to understand the little miniature debates that are really deep in there. I mean, that, that's a problem for all journalism, and it's a problem in part for this. Um, it, the, the political consequences, as you alluded to and Peter does, is that especially when you're dealing with, like, the deficit or economists who often are kind of reactionary, um, the consensus is between a very kind of deficit hawk neoliberalist view and then a, like, super reactionary conservative view. <laughs> right. So, like, actual genuine you know, progressivism is, like, completely missing from the dialogue, right? Like, Krug, like Krugman is thankfully a, a, a breath of fresh air on this stuff, but, like, we, you know, when you read Economists on the Deficit, some think we need immediate austerity and some think, you know, we need mild austerity <laughs> as opposed to, like, don't care about the deficit, give everyone a job, and the deficit will take care of itself, which is actually the correct answer. Um, but, you know, that's not necessarily the elite, opinionated, like, serious answer, which is what will then inform the journalism. And Reinhardt and Rogoff are, like, ground zero. For, their paper in particular is ground zero for that kind of seriousness. We need to, you know, be willing to take a lot of pain to make sure the deficit stays still. Um, you know, that kind of journalism, which is one reason why I think this report percolated so far across the entire public sphere. I mean, it's interesting, and, and, and I don't, I don't want to, um, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be hyperbolic about this, but um, in some respects, we can see the same sort of dynamic. I mean, there, there, there's a certain sort of um, structural issue here, as as it was with Iraq in some way. There's a certain amount of of, of credentialism that is involved here, and when two um, esteemed uh, economists uh, from Harvard say this is what it is, it um, it is risky for you to maintain your status as someone who is taken seriously, because you need to be taken seriously on both ends of it, right? You need to be taken seriously by your audience, and you need to be taken seriously by your sources. And on some level, there's a, um, there's a balancing act there. And, um, and, and the way that you're taken seriously by your audience is to be, in some ways, taken seriously by your sources. Um, and it, it's this sort of credentialism that is sort of uh, embedded in there. Um, and particularly if you are one of those people who don't necessarily have the ability to sort of say, like, you know, I've broken down your, your, your spreadsheet and there's a problem here. Uh, so you have to almost take what they're saying. Uh, it, it, to me, it seems to really be a, a, a very strong argument, again, for transparency, because this is always it's that black box that always seems to bring us to this point. And transparency, then, you know, it's even worse, and this is an, an analogy to the Iraq war where source capture was definitely in play, is um, the elite self-policing is just broken down, right? Like Reinhardt and Rogoff are not going to be reprimanded by the economist professions, right? Where other kinds of, like, you know, scientists, scientists, like biologists, if they try to, you know, move really bad data on, on other biologists will be, like, re, you know, punished for it in, in, in harder, soft ways. You know, how many economists thought Wall Street was going to deliver all this prosperity in the 2000s or thought the recession would be no big deal or freaked out about the deficit, all of which turned out to be absolutely wrong. And, you know, no one's lost their jobs. No one's been punished, you know, in any, even in a social way. And the same thing with Iraq, right? All the warmongers uh, who, you know, were cheerleading the, 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 march, the drum march to war or, you know, directly, personally attacking critics of the Iraq war and, and the buildup, 
and none of them lost jobs, right? They're right. still in think tanks. They're still they would have taken over the Romney administration. They still float around in democratic circles. So like that 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 lack of transparency, which is super necessary, but also just like a general shaming of the elites when they screw up in a major way. Uh, and a new, you know, I think that's also really important. So how does this, I mean, give me your sense of, of how this, you know, how this winds its way. I mean, what, what, what should we be looking for in terms of this chipping away at that and what needs to happen to chip away at that underpinnings of austerity? I mean, obviously, at this point, uh, we're not going to see President Obama come on uh, television tomorrow and say, Hey guys, uh, this is a little bit embarrassing, and I'm speaking for you know a lot of the folks in the Senate. You know that whole thing about tightening uh, the family's belts and us tightening our belts, and whoops, uh, you know. I mean, how does it? W- do you think this is going to reverberate in the um, in the circles of power where it, where it needs to? And and how how does that happen? So it's important to understand what was actually disproven and, and what was what is off the table. What Roe, Goff, and Reinhardt are now retreating from in their public statements is the idea that there's a cliff, right? If we get beyond a debt to GDP ratio, we're in a lot of trouble. They're essentially arguing to a much weaker, minor drop off that I think a lot of people would concede, though there's not enough data to, to justify it. Um, so that's really important, which means that there's no – if we try to take action while we have a weak economy, as we should, um, there's no other thing that's going to, like, sneak in and destroy the country. Um, now, obviously, in power, there's a lot of people who would really like an austerity agenda. They want to radically shift the balance of power from the poor to the rich. Uh, they would like to dismantle the federal social insurance network. They'd like to do other things as well, especially in Europe. So I don't think they're going to be dissuaded. I think, hopefully, people who think that maybe we were doing too much from 2008 to 2010 – uh, and then got really nervous about the deficit, we'll understand now that we didn't do enough. <laughs> um, there's still plenty we could do. We could build infrastructure. We could give re- reinstate the payroll tax. We could avoid the stupid sequestration. And that would not actually hurt us or put us in some sort of weird danger zone, but instead would be an appropriate response that would actually really rebuild the economy. Yeah, uh, we can we can only uh, hope, I guess, at this point. But, uh, Mike, thank you so much for joining us, and uh, thanks for your uh, piece, which... Um, has created really in 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 um, in many circles just a firestorm. Uh, in the, you're you're basically translating uh, this study, but it was uh, it was fascinating to to watch, and I hope it it reverberates. Um, and I and I just hope that we get to see somebody on a Sunday show mock somebody espousing this study uh, by using the Excel spreadsheet. Some some really good pithy phrase about it. One can hope. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, Mike.